we have a very famous example, um, a video that's going viral on Twitter. 13-year-old girl says to Warren Buffett, I'm really worried about the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency of the world. We're printing lots and lots of dollars. And if we're not the reserve currency, the value of the dollar is going to collapse. We're going to have hyperinflation. What should I do, Mr. Buffett? You know, and I, I wouldn't normally criticize, you know, a, a, a respected, successful business person of his age. But he and Charlie Munger did choose to go up on stage and answer questions and give financial guidance and advice and investment advice, and they are looked up to. And so you watch Warren Buffett answer the question, and his answer is, well, yeah, I mean, I guess the Fed inflated the, the money, but they needed to. And, uh, you know, it's really difficult, you know, and politics have a difficult mm. problem. And, yeah, you're right, it is a problem. And Munger will say, you know, the dollar's going to zero. It's going to zero. They know it's a problem. And then he kind of meanders through it with, a, with a, a, an end advice, which is, well, you know, I don't know, but, you know, America's a great country. Don't bet against America. But the, but the, but the, the blood-curdling, terrifying, you know, depressing, you know, takeaway from the clip is, is the 13-year-old girl knows what the problem is. The country's full of people that can articulate the problem and write thousand-page books on the problem. If you're rich in America, you don't have the answer because you're too comfortable, right? And so what you've got is a bunch of, of mega billionaires that are very successful in America, but they don't have an answer or solution to the 13-year-old girl. The solution to the question was Bitcoin, right? And Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger can't allow themselves to understand that because, because they're so successful, they don't need to open their mind to, and embrace a new idea. If Warren Buffett woke up tomorrow and his bank seized all of his assets and they were devalued to zero and he was a pauper and his neighbor, the Uber driver, was walking around with $100,000 worth of Bitcoin on a hardware wallet, Warren would say, what is that again? Mm -hmm. Explain that to me. Yeah. What do you mean? My government, my bank can't steal all my money? That's a pretty good idea. Right. And, and so I, I think that when you're a refugee from fleeing Iraq or you're crossing the border and, you know, and when you try to go through an airport and a hostile regime steals all your money and seizes all your gold, when you have to flee your thousand acre or 10,000 acre farm in Africa because a hostile regime decided it was illegal for people like you to own land, when that happens, you become a believer in... Uh, a, a non-sovereign store of value crypto asset network, which is what Bitcoin is. The people that came to this country, the Huguenots, you know, the, the settlers, the, the colonists, I think they understood it. I mean, they had all their, all their property seized from them from wherever they came from. And their idea was, here's a place where I can own something and people might not steal it from me. As soon as they got here, people started trying to steal it from them again. Right? That's the human condition. Just slower. Just slower. <laughs> but that's why they kept going west. It's like, I got to go west where there's no politicians to steal it from me. Right? And, that, and that's a pretty powerful driver. So I think that the, that the conclusion is people that are comfortable, they're fat, dumb, and happy in the United States are going to continue to reject new ideas like crypto assets like Bitcoin, because they don't have to. If, if I don't have to embrace a new idea, when I get to a certain age, I won't. And that, that, is, that is as old as the, it's the, the Thomas Kuhn structure of scientific revolution. He said, paradigm shifts only get embraced in times of war or when the old guard dies. If you want to introduce a new idea, you need a war. Wars kind of work because if we're fighting a war and I introduce an airplane and I drop a, a nuclear bomb on your head, then you stop rejecting air power and you stop rejecting atomic weapons. You, you embrace the reality that, yeah, they do work and maybe you need to figure it out. Wars work, but absent a war, people just have to 
you know, they just have to pass on because they're not going to embrace a new idea. So you talked about Charlie Munger, and Charlie Munger gave the famous rat poison speech, right? He actually gave two speeches. In the second one, he said, no, I didn't say it was poison. I said it was rat poison. So you're saying that he's in the middle of the, of the system. Was he disingenuous? Was he dishonest? Or was he mistaken? If you, if you don't spend for, – first, you have to have an open mind and say, is it possible that this works? And then second, you have to spend somewhere around 10 hours to understand it. I just don't think he has an open mind, and I don't think he spent 10 hours, right? I mean, it, it's, not, it's not uncommon, right? People in their 80s and their 90s don't generally embrace the wonder that is the Unreal Engine or TikTok yeah. or, their, or, or Alibaba. Or their 90s. Right? So, so it's, I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't – again, it, if they were private citizens – I don't, I don't criticize private 80 and 90 year old octogenarians and, and the like uh, for not embracing the new cool thing, right? It, they don't have <laughs> to like, obvious, right. you don't have to like drone races, you know? It, you know, my, my father doesn't have to like drone races in his 80s. That's fine. Uh, but the point is, if you're going to tell people how to invest hundreds of billions of dollars or trillions of dollars and you're going to give advice to a 13-year-old about how she can not be poor or not, or, or not starve to death, I, I think that then you have to actually study these things. And the elephant in the room is everybody in the world is facing inflation. Everyone in the world is facing counterparty risk. Everyone, everywhere in the world we're losing faith in governments, banks, and currencies. The solution is a bank that isn't run by people, that isn't subject to the whim of a government, that is incorruptible, that allows you to be your own bank, right? And, and that is a message that's getting out. Uh, we just need to keep beating the drum on that. Uh, it, it is, I think, the most important economic opportunity slash issue slash technology of our time. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, Click right here.